Welcome to part one of three videos which show you how to set up Main Stage 2 to recognize your external MIDI controller and then to be able to use that controller to control the various Main Stage functions during your performance. Now in this example I'm going to be using the Behringer FCB 1010 foot controller as my external MIDI device but it could be any MIDI device but for this example we're using the FCB 1010. Now since there's a few different steps involved in this, I'm going to break up the video into three different sections as I mentioned earlier. The first is going to be uh, covering the, if you want to say, the semi-automatic configuration mode which is using the MIDI learn function within main stage 2 to go out and um, auto detect your external MIDI device and to associate the various parameters with the control function that you're working on at that point in time. And then the second is to how to manually configure main stage to work and interface with your external MIDI device. And then the third part of it is focused on the FCB 1010 controller and how to program that to then send the correct corresponding MIDI messages to main stage 2. So in this first part we're going to be talking about the MIDI learn function. So, as you can see on the screen here, I've created a new template, and I'm using a, um, a guitar rig template. It could be anything. It could be keyboards, but for this example, we're going to use um, a, a guitar rig template. Now, this is brand new, and as you can see from the splash screen here, main stage is telling me that hardware controls aren't yet assigned, and I know that because I'm just about to go in and do it now. So I'm just going to click OK to close this, and then we see the the normal main stage uh, edit screen and in the main section here you can see is the, are the various amp controls and stomp box controls and then the patch list which will be shown within your within your performance display over in the far right hand side here are the various channel strips associated with the patch but we're not going to focus on those in this video and then on the left hand side is the uh, is the concert itself and then the various sets within that and then the patches within each set which would be used for the uh, various songs. Now what we'll do is we'll go in and uh, configure a volume pedal to be associated with uh, with the controls here and the way I want to do this is it, 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 I want the volume pedal to respond the same way regardless of the set that I'm playing in or the song or the patch that I'm playing within as well. So that really means that I'm going to be assigning the device at the concert level. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to the um, to the right hand side here. I'll just zoom in here a little bit and I'm going to select uh, concert level. And then right above that you can see the various modes and they are layout, edit, perform, and full screen. And for the next step, we're going to go into the layout mode. So let me click that and zoom out a little bit here so you can see what edit mode looks like. So within edit mode, or within layout mode rather, um, it just shows you the various patches and the controls associated with that and the amp controls and any other pedals you have associated with it. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this up a little bit since we're going to be using a volume pedal and I'm going to delete this from the template first. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to assign a volume pedal to my layout. So down here in the screen controls palette we can scroll down until we find a foot pedal and there's one right there. We're going to select that and then we're simply going to drag that over to our layout screen. Uh, let me just put that right there. Okay. And you don't have to do this but um, I'm going to assign some text to this just designating that it is in fact the volume pedal. Okay, so the next thing is we have to tell main stage what external MIDI device we actually want to talk to and what we want this specific control here to be associated with. 
So in this instance, we're going to be using the MIDI learn function, which is right here. And what MainStage's MIDI learn function will do is, after you press learn, you then externally move your, your device around, and that can be a slider, it can be a volume pedal, it can be a rotary switch, it could be anything. And MainStage will auto-detect what that is, and then it will map the associated parameters to it, which you can see right, right down here. And those parameters would be the device, the channel, uh, and the number associated with it. So why don't we go ahead and do that right now. And I'll just zoom in here. So I'm going to click the Learn function. And I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what's happening with this volume pedal. And then I'm going to move my volume pedal up and down. And you can see that MainStage has already recognized it. Now, what I would suggest you do here is you move your control two or three times just so that MainStage recognizes it properly. And I'd also move it through the full range of motion so that MainStage is able to recognize the correct minimum and maximum values associated with it. So now that that's done, I'll uncheck Learn. And if you see right here, what MainStage has done is it's gone out and it's auto-detected my FCB 1010, which channel the MIDI messages are being transmitted on, that's channel 1, and which CC was recognized, and that was 7, uh, which is normally associated with volume. So now what we've been able to successfully do is associate that external MIDI device with MainStage. And now the next step is for us to tell MainStage what actions we want that control to perform. And while we've designated it as a volume pedal, we've really, at this level, really only said that in text format. We haven't functionally made that de definition yet, so the next step is to really go in and, and uh, configure that. And the way we're going to do that is, again, if we go back to the various modes here, we're going to go into edit mode and if we click edit mode we're then going to click on our volume pedal and what happens right there is the screen control inspector will come up and it will show you that that's an unmapped control at this point in time and it just simply means we haven't designated what that control is going to be used for yet. So what we're now going to do is, since I want to control volume, that's associated with the output options here. So I'm going to click output and then click volume and it goes to blue and then when I map the parameter to it, it should go red saying that the parameter has been mapped fully. I'm just going to click map parameters. You can see that volume pedal went to red right there. Okay. So now what we're ready for is testing that just to make sure that we did everything correctly. And in order to do that, we're once again going to go up to our, our mode screen here and click on perform. And that'll take us into the performance side of things. And now what I'm going to do is manually move my volume pedal as if I was in perform mode and see if that pedal moves and it does. So let me just zoom out so you can get an appreciation for what that would look like. So there's a volume pedal moving and you can see the output dial moving up and down corresponding with the movement of the pedal. So now what we've been able to, what now what we have done is we've been able to uh, associate MainStage 2 with the external device and then the second part of that is we told MainStage what to do with that device. So at this point we're done and that is how you use the MIDI learn function within MainStage to map an external controlling device to it and to designate uh, the function within a main stage.